Okay, this is a quick follow-up video to the recent Kubernetes video where we stood up um, the Kubernetes environment using Terraform and Ansible on Proxmox. Um, and these are a couple of extra bits that didn't quite fit in. So if you remember, and if you've seen the original video, we have a master node, and we have all the individual worker nodes um, for Kubernetes running in Proxmox, and we've used node port to, uh, to set up um, uh, basically access into a service. Um, something I didn't really cover properly in the video is the fact that the way that the traffic is routed uh, in Kubernetes is basically you can effectively pick any node um, within um, the environment and it will route the traffic back to the actual um, node doing the work. So I'll just change the IP addresses there, as you can see. Um, so that's one point. Um, another point is that um, if you want to go and run um, as I am um, using WSL to connect, um, you will need to run some additional commands to get it installed. Those are the commands there. Um, I will link to those in the video and include them. They're also going to be part of the, video, the description for the original video. Um, but the additional command that you need to run, um, you will need to go and get the um, uh, the actual uh, cube config. And if you've followed the instructions um, as um, previously, um, so just to, to demonstrate, if you try to do um, to do cube control get nodes at this point and um, that fails because there is no definition of the config so the command you need to run um, goes and fetches the um, cube config from um, the staging machine that we've been using so just running that quickly so you should be typing in the password of the user on the staging machine rather than I was my pseudo password locally um, so now if we do ls.cube, um, then we have the config. Okay, all good. Um, so this then means that when you try and run um, your cube control, get nodes, it, if provided that you are sufficiently elevated, you should be able to connect. Um, let me have a look at that. In fact, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm not specifying the um, the cube config file. So what I need to do, cube, uh, where are we? Get nodes, dash, dash, cube config. It does seem to be that on um, Kubernetes that it doesn't, sorry, that on um, WSL it doesn't actually like um, the definition of, <coughs> or rather adding in a default config. And there we go. So we're specifying the config file and we're able to connect. Fantastic. Um, the other thing that's worthwhile doing um, on your um, on your environment would be to install Helm. <coughs> Excuse me. And to do that, um, what you want to do? So we'll actually we'll go and um, connect um, directly to it now. So we'll go I mean, I leverage my command history here a little, and we can now do uh, that. And when connected here, we're going to go into the uh, Kubernetes directory that we've been using and connect to the host. So this is connecting to the master node now. And the commands that you want to run is you want to pull down the, uh, the Helm script with the curl command like so. Then you're going to chmod it and finally you're going to execute it with the get helm command and that installs helm um and um that would be about it apart from one extra bonus thing that i'm going to show you which is to do with your local machine um and I'm not going to show you the the um, sign up process for this tool, but it's um, it's worth downloading. And if you are an individual, or I think it's something like your company turnover is less than 10 million, um, then you can use use it for free. But you do have to sign up for an activation key. Um, is this tool called Lens? And what Lens lets you do is it lets you uh, have a GUI to manage Kubernetes. So if we go in here and we go and add, add cube config from file system, I will just go and navigate and find this. And in fact, I've forgotten where I put it because it's uh, it's not easily accessible from WSL. So hopping back into terminal. 
then we can uh, jump back onto the host machine and we should be able to go and do uh, CD, <coughs> excuse me, um, dot cube. And we're going to do cp uh, config to forward slash mnt forward slash d. And we'll just do that nice and quick. Uh, it could be the C drive, it could be anywhere you want to uh, locate that file. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Uh, essentially, once you have it, then you can hit um, sync and within lens, or rather, you can upload it and then um, hit sync on it and it will then um, port in that Kubernetes um, configuration and that then should give you a graphical overview of what you have and I'm picking on things that haven't got very much on them at the moment um, but there we go there are the nodes and in terms of the workloads we should see within there just a simple um, application so we can have a look at that deployment and that then should be our nginx there we go that's our app server nginx instance um, and you can then see all the networking endpoints um, port forwarding etc uh, where are we it probably comes up as an endpoint um, yeah there we go so the app service is running on port 80 but of course it's forwarding in from port um, 3200 um, which yeah there you go you can see it there on services and um, so yeah, this is just a, a quick video, as I said, to demonstrate a few extra features. And um, hopefully this has been of use and uh, it should, uh, it, yeah, it's just augment the, uh, the existing Kubernetes video. So thanks very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if that's your kind of thing. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.